On today's episode, multiple space launches while NASA lands on Mars, turbofans fly apart, and Biden reverses Trump on apprenticeships. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.tv today. There's plenty of major space news this week as NASA successfully soft-landed the Perseverance rover on Mars. Roscosmos used a Soyuz launcher to orbit a Progress freighter to the International Space Station, while SpaceX launched another 60 Starlink satellites aboard a Falcon 9. Also, Northrop Grumman launched an Antares vehicle with another ISS cargo vessel, this time a Cygnus supply ship. Why the rapid launch cadence? Well, ISS resupply is now handled by multiple launch contracts in the new generation of low-Earth orbit SATCOMs designed to provide high-speed internet service, well, that means smaller satellites, but lots of them. And in low-Earth orbit, decay of those small satellite orbits, well, that causes losses which must be replenished with new launches on a regular basis. Now, this week, there were numerous technology demonstration satellites launched piggyback on commercial missions and sponsored by universities around the world from Japan to Abu Dhabi. Noteworthy amongst the current batch of CubeSats is Guarani Sat 1, the first satellite orbited by Paraguay. A rare event happened in aerospace this week a catastrophic failure of a turbofan engine in flight. The incident aircraft is a Boeing 777 operated by United as Flight 328 on a route from Denver to Honolulu on February 20th. The number two engine failed due to the loss of a fan blade, which caused separation of the engine cowling, parts of which fell onto a Denver suburb. The engine was a Pratt & Whitney 4000 series high bypass turbofan designed by Pratt as a successor to the legendary JT9D that powered the 747. Introduced in June 1987, variants of this engine produced between 50 and 98,000 pounds of thrust. The 4077-112 engine on this 26-year-old incident aircraft appears to have failed in a manner similar to another United 777 engine failure in 2018. That aircraft was also a 777-200. Pratt & Whitney 4000 series engines are equipped with Kevlar blankets to contain fan blades, but in both incidents, engines shed parts in the air. At press time, Boeing 777 aircraft equipped with this engine are grounded pending an FAA ruling on an appropriate inspection routine. In a remarkable coincidence, a Boeing 747 freighter operated by Longtail Aviation and equipped with another derivative, the Pratt Whitney 4056, also suffered an engine failure on February 21st with uncontained blades causing slight injuries to two people on the ground. With two similar failures occurring merely days apart, we can expect a rapid root cause analysis and lots of overtime in wide body hangars around the world. We'll watch for developments. Are apprenticeships a solution of the skills shortage in America? Well, President Biden thinks so, and he's released a policy statement outlining how the administration plans to increase the role of apprenticeships in worker training. The statement, published on WhiteHouse.gov, outlines what the administration calls the American Rescue Plan, which will include significant input from major labor unions. President Biden has announced support for a bipartisan bill as well, the National Apprenticeship Act, which is estimated by the House Education and Labor Committee to add over a million new jobs and skilled trades. The President has also asked the Department of Labor to reinstate the National Advisory Committee on Apprenticeships, a group comprised of stakeholders in organized labor, industry, and education. In a controversial move, the President has also rescinded the Trump Administration Executive Order 13801, which formalized Industry Recognized Apprenticeship Programs, or IRAPs, and has asked the Department of Labor to develop rulemaking to reverse IRAP programs. The administration expects that public sector-defined apprenticeship programs will dovetail with increased infrastructure spending in the post-COVID recovery period. The implication of these changes for existing industry-funded training programs is unclear. We'll report back when Department of Labor rules are announced. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For deeper engineering content, visit Engineering.tv for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future, not found on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.